So I build robots, which are occasionally not just a meme, but also effective, surprisingly. And it's been a while since I've built a combat robot, so today I'm going to make an ant weight one pound combat robot out of this purse. Because why not? I could put it sideways, add wheels and a bar, and make a horizontal spinner, but that would be the incorrect decision. If you're ever wondering if the robot builder was going for the win, or just building for the meme, look at the height to width ratio. For example, Doomba was designed for the meme, Huge was designed to blend the two, and Original Sin was designed for the win, until it became a meme. So this irrefutably proves that the correct way to orient this purse is vertically, like this. Maybe with a vertical spinner? Yeah, that looks good. Let's do that. But vertical spinners are difficult to make turn, so I can't just slap the wheels to the side of the chassis or they'll be too close to the center of the robot to apply enough torque. And if I space them out, it'll look dumb and they'll be vulnerable. So I've got to find a way to get the wheel away from the center, but then also inside the body. For inspiration, let's go to an omni-wheel robot, where the drive motors constrain one direction for the wheel, but they're free and unconstrained to slide in the other direction. I don't got space for four wheels though, so what happens if I remove one? Well, it might pivot about that third wheel unless you angle the other wheels to compensate. All right, what if we remove two of them? Well, now you have two unconstrained axis of rotation. It'll be undrivable because you have nothing to resist the chassis rotating. Oh, right. The gyro effect of a vertical... Here I talked about math before realizing that math is boring, so here's an analogy instead. It's like if you tried to push a boulder, and instead of the boulder pushing back with an equal and opposite reaction, it pushed back 90 degrees of the direction you were pushing. Magic. So anyway, this will help with stability when driving straight. And then I can also replace the omni wheels with bad omni wheels, which will increase the stability at the expense of maneuverability. So now I've got an idea, I mock up the purse, add two wheels that are 90 degrees from each other, and quick throw together a chassis. And while I'm at it, I mock this idea up just with some quick spare parts, see how it drives, and like I expected, it's uh, pretty impossible to control. But if my hypothesis is correct, it should be a lot more stable once I have a spinning weapon on board. I 3D print the prototype chassis, throw in the gear motors, link in the description, and would you look at that? It's tippy, without even having the weapon up front. So this is going to need to redesign. Also, I weigh it, and uh, the purse combined with this chassis is over one pound. Crap. Ah, my homemade lens fell apart. So anyway, this does mean I need to reconsider my premise. I can either rebuild the purse out of a lighter material, or I can find another shell to put around this chassis. Shell? Oh? Huh? Tacos! We're gonna go with tacos. It's gonna be a taco-themed robot. Taco Tuesday. And because the bottom profile is round, I can then redesign the entire thing to have a really low center of gravity so it acts like one of those really pulley toys and just, like, rolls back up onto its wheels. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. So now that I have this delicious design, I need to figure out what material I'm going to 3D print it out of. In the past, I've used metal, UHMW, which is the best, nylon, carbon fiber infill nylon, which is the second best, carbon rods, ABS, fungi, and of course, foam board. In my search for something different, I saw this article on foaming PLA, which you can see as the temperature goes up, it uh, expands more coming out of the nozzle. So I bought two types to test, active foaming PLA, which reacts coming out of the nozzle, and pre-foamed PLA. I compared to regular PLA, and the active foaming version is definitely a little bit softer, while the pre-foamed version responds pretty similarly to regular PLA. So I'm going to use the pre-foamed version, try it out in competition, link in the description if you want to try it too. And I'll be using the gyroid style infill. We'll see how it works, but I found it to be a good balance between strength and weight. I cut the wheels to size, and then the print turned out well, so I throw in the motors and speed controllers, link for the parts in the description, and if you want to know how to, like, wire up a combat robot, I've got a video on the electronics also in the description. Next, I have my hardened steel spinner, which you can see is not quite balanced right now, and it's also 0.3 ounces overweight. But some quick work with the Dremel fixes that, and then I uh, bought too thick of washers or have a bad design, but I just uh, heat up the plastic and press fit the washers into place, and then install the spinner. I decided to go with a hard shell taco. I'll be using titanium. I tried to match the texture of a real shell, and then I paint it. And after adding the titanium shell, I have basically no weight left over, so for a top cover, I just use foam board. So now let's see how it dries. So first of all, I have to throttle down to about half speed in order to turn at all. When it's at full speed, it only drives straight, uh, which I guess is the stability I was looking for, so hypothesis confirmed. 
It does hit hard, but because of the wobbly design, I'm not able to add a front wedge, so it's going to be difficult to win the ground game. Actually, it's probably going to be difficult to win at all, but uh, it does work. So for a meme robot, this is uh, pretty exciting, and it's going to be fun to see this compete in about a month. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another robot made entirely out of leather.